Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back for another Positive Talk. Episode 301 for 2024. Super excited that I got to 300 episodes and bringing back another friend who has done two other Positive Talks with me. So it's exciting to bring back people who you're familiar with if you've watched a lot of my episodes. Uh, and also launched the coach talk this year. So super excited. Yes, already at 301 episodes. It's insane. So let me get him in real quick and then we will get started. Honestly, I feel like I No, it makes me look a little bit pale, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm actually in Miami right now. Um, I just decided to give myself like a little uh, break from New York City. Um, so it is, I'm wearing shorts. It is 60, 70 degrees outside and we are living our best life here right now. I love that which is funny because i look tanner in this light yeah. and i've only been in the sun for like <laughs> maybe two minutes not even like and it's been cloudy oh i love it well you make me look extremely pale so that's it's good <laughs> but you're behind but you're behind a bone heather like wall so it may like it makes you look not as yeah. white, like not as like <laughs> albino pale kind of thing yeah I, I, I might need to take a trip to miami or florida somewhere maybe a island somewhere to get some sun before summer I hits i feel like you would do but i feel like what you should do is like i think i think they do this in june where it's like the gay pride in disney i think you and your man would like love that i feel like <laughs> you guys would be so into that yeah, I would definitely have to bring my friend Cassie along because she's like my Disney partner. Okay. Every single time I've been to Disney lately, it's been with her. So well, it's like bring her like, and Kevin. It's like the gays. For, it's like the gay. Yeah, so it's like I think the park is very pride themed, and then I think there's like a pool party at like Blizzard Beach. I think if that still exists, but <laughs> that's, we'll make it that's for another story. happen. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I will let you introduce yourself for the people who may not know you, and then we can kind of dive into the conversation because I'm excited for it today. Yeah, um, I am Jake. I have, when was my first episode with you? Episode eight? <laughs> it I was, was very early on. I've definitely been in the beginning of this. Um, so I know Ben, I guess through Instagram, we must have met over the pandemic era. Yeah. That's probably how we virtually met. We have not met in person yet, but we've talked and we still talk all the time especially with our or i'm the one who will always message the brag plastics <laughs> yeah. um but you know jared's too busy being engaged and um <laughs> yeah so we're we'll eventually maybe get we'll eventually get another um another uh, group going another yeah. group chat going hopefully another catch up but yeah so i'm jake i live in new york i am a queer singer songwriter um i kind of started off my journey musically in the jazz education realm and i kind of ventured off and became a singer songwriter um and now it's kind of become like this like dark folk kind of vibe with some pop influences and still like keeping my jazz stuff alive um like in the hints and pieces of it so um you know released an album in 2022 called broken stars and now i'm going to be released i'm releasing a single in five days called never be mine and it's kind of the start of like chapter two of my musical life my career and yeah i mean did you get a chance to listen to this track that I, when i sent, sent it to you so i listened to about uh 30 seconds of it and then jumped on here so Got it. I, okay. I love it so you'll get the, the what i've heard you'll listen to, listen to it fully and then you know we can you can and then like stream and then obviously stream it because I need money. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this is so yeah, I think the positivity in this one, I feel like, like we've had some very significant positive talks. We had one after uh, the election in 2020. We had one um, somewhere. I don't remember the last time. Maybe that was the last time. No, we've done one more before that. Yeah. I don't remember. But um, 
So yeah, I think this positivity talk is kind of being comfortable. I think it's just being like, not, I don't know if there's like a specific theme, but I'm trying to go, what I was trying to go for when I had this in mind was that like, you don't need to be, you don't need to change something about like your art form or your aesthetic to try to blend in somewhere. You can just be like, you can stay true to like what your artistic, your creativity is inclined to do, I guess. Does that wow. make sense? I feel like... <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> I mean, positivity always ranges from... it. Like, there's always so many things you can generalize positivity from. So, like, to be very specific with positivity, I think, is, like, a win. If you can, like, really categorize, like, what you're being positive about. So, yeah. and um, we're going to do it by having a very sad romantic song be released. That's <laughs> generally what will happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I want to give you like big props for the content that you've been putting out on your platform because I feel like there's been an energy shift in there, you there where has been yes I have I think the end I'm re I was releasing the energy from like the end of my twenties and now that I'm in my thirties I've only been taking in energy that's like good for me and not destructive or um, unrequited, uh, like effort, you know, things that are holistically good for me and not trying to do it in the hopes of pleasing a group or please it or, you know, or trying to blend into a crowd because I think, yeah, there's never like, it just wasn't good. And I figured out it wasn't good. So I think going into this year, specifically, not just writing an album, I was like, I'm going to release this track, I'm going to get back on board to like who I was. And also like this, and also like this trip in Miami has also been like another like time capsule kind of a thing going back to where I went to school, and remembering like who I was back when I was like 19, and just starting college and like being my, you know, and so, yeah, that's, and I appreciate, I appreciate your, uh, your, um, your comments on it. It's been very nice to have like a friend be like, yeah, this is really good stuff. Like, and I appreciate it. And thank you. Yeah. I think that when you start to make that shift and even if like the music that comes out of it is like lyrics that may, may touch on some of those heartstrings of like sadness and pain that has been felt. Like, I think that the beauty of connecting with your work and knowing its worth and not holding it up to other people's stuff that's out there and just knowing that it can be beautiful on its own, despite what may be going mainstream, because I think too often people shift and then lose their uniqueness and lose touch with their art because they are trying so hard to be like, oh my gosh, I need to make it like these people or these artists because this is what's trending right now. Uh, and I think just from what I heard from this song that I was listening to, I could definitely connect with you again. And I was like, okay, he's, he's definitely connecting. And not saying that your album that you released wasn't connected, but I could definitely hear you and your style in that little bit that yeah, I heard. Yeah, I, I think... You know, I think when I look back at my first record, I definitely had, it was a, I mean, I will say that I'm very proud of it. I treat all my songs like my children. I, you know, and I, and I, it's funny, I'm staying at a fraternity brothers uh, place in Miami right now. Um, and, you know, and I say, when I say children, we've had, we have like the whole big little pappy son, like lineage thing. Um, so when I say children, I have multiple children in many different forms. <laughs> um, but when you're, when it comes to like artwork, you have to treat each song as if it's because it's some extension of you and so the first album i felt was very true to what the theme was because i took a lot of externally um external externally uh inspiration and i brought it from the stories that i heard and try to relate it to myself in some way and i think this record or and this stuff that i'm writing is more so like pieces of myself being put at like, so it's like the complete opposite of how the first writing process went. Um, and so Never Be Mine was actually like, a, I, I wrote it, I think it's definitely the first song I've had it for so many years and I've been, I've toured with it and people seem to really like it. I mean, I play guitar for the first time in a very long time, which a lot of people don't really remember that I play guitar. <laughs> um, 
I had, um, you know, I'm not trying to go overboard with like pop or with certain influences. I'm just kind of writing it as if it's just fresh from my mind. And I, that's how I want my music to come off as if it's like the first time I'm discovering my own song. And that's usually what I apply to. Um, so yeah, I mean, the song was, it was interesting because it came off of god i didn't even have the record in mind when i wrote the song but it was i was really like thinking like okay broken stars was it like this was the last time i'm writing something like i don't think i have anything else left to say and then i watched this really horrible movie called good luck chuck with dane cook and jessica alba it is such a bad movie it's so bad it's <laughs> such a horrible piece of shit god awful movie um I would love it if you actually like put the bleeps in if you edit this because I think that would be really funny. Uh, um, and I just remember watching it and I was just like thinking like, wow, this is like very similar to my life in a non-comedic sense because I, any guy that I ever like courted in my life ended up like finding someone like was that was like the love of their life after me. And I just thought that's a really interesting idea of the fact that like, you know, there's some things that like you have a great you know, you start off well and you have a connection and then all of a sudden, like, it just fades. And it's either because, like, you didn't have... Usually the line is, I didn't feel the spark. That's usually the line I always get when I'm, like, getting dumped. And yeah. my... So I wrote... There's a line in the, in the, in the pre-chorus that's like, I, our love just never shined. Um, and then there's always this thing where it's like when you're on a dating app, for example. I mean, you have no issues with this because you're taken. But... <laughs> Like, where, like, go away. Um, <laughs> no, as, as I'll, um, I'll, it's all, it's all jest. It's all jest. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've had my fair share of being out had, there on the sea of being single. So <laughs> you have, I, I can you feel you and relate to my past self with lyrics like this. And, um, yeah, I think with, Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So uh, that was that part. And then the other aspect of it was like, you know, when you're on a dating app, you're, you know, time. You ever like have a dating app conversation with someone who's like very meaningful, like, and you're like, oh, shit, like, this is like someone who's going to be like the one. This is someone of sustenance, of sustenance, of substance. Um, so I, I um, um, sorry. All right, I'm just reading this comment. Neither one of you be single. Call me. Um, even my fraternity brother's like laughing at off screen. Right now. Um, and uh, anyway, so there, there's like the whole dating app thing, and like you know, it just eventually just runs out. And it's like I've had no chance with time. Is another lyric I included, and it was just some things that I remembered specifically being like, oh, I just didn't have a chance with time, and it's just like, oh, well, like, well, they're never you'll never be mine so it's like that was kind of what stemmed from it was watching this really horrible movie um it served its purpose it really did um and i think there's you know and obviously like i've i feel like i've this song has been it's such a sad song but it is joyous for me because it's kind of my return back into writing um and I, you know, I, I took a pretty long break over the past year trying to more so work on, like, my personal life. And I think from there, I realized that, like, I spent my time in, like, a completely wrong way. And now it's like, I'm going to spend this year doing things that, A, are good for me, spending pe time with people who actually want to spend time with me, and, you know, spending time with art. Because when you spend time with your creativity is when you're for me at least the most myself so yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. a lot of people can find themselves within art and find like creative sources of releasing themselves because I've had lots of people who are like I'm not artsy I'm not artistic I don't have the ability but sometimes it's just like you got to let it out, uh, yeah. whether it's through song or through uh, painting or any form of right. art. Sometimes you just have to exist. Yeah. yeah. And just let it out in any way, shape or form that it can come out. Yeah. I think there's, yeah. And I, I think, yeah. And I think that's like 
kind of what this trip is for me specifically being here in Miami was like I I kind of was losing I lost myself like not all of myself but I lost a piece of myself trying to keep up with like certain things in New York and I was and then I like I think being here I realized like I was a completely different person back then I was people basket weave what are you talking about I see I feel like there's a whole <laughs> thing of basket weaving i don't remember that guy's name but i oh. just say basket weaving still a thing um uh, there's actually a pot my favorite part about that is the comments don't pop up once the live is shared so you are straight on in the middle of a sentence and then just broke into people basket weave <laughs> well it's oh. just i can't like yeah i have when you have adhd sometimes you just like can't disregard some of these sentences <laughs> Yeah, um, I love so, it. <laughs> and the fact that it's like delayed, like I'm not gonna see it like ten minutes after he like whatever. Yeah. Um what we're we talking about. So yeah, creativity, I think people have it uh in one way or another. And I think um and I think there is I think you just I think it's some a way of connecting to yourself also. You get to be in touch with yourself. You don't and it reminds me of like what it's it reminds me similarly to like traveling like abroad by yourself and you know you're just backpacking and you're kind of in the um and if you're kind kind of in this bubble and you only really have yourself to talk to and you have you're just like you're faced with yourself and you kind of have to like assess who you are in a way you don't get to do that in many other occasions besides traveling or, you know, using creativity to express yourself. So, yeah. 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 I think we learn so much from the world around us, but then we start to look at the world and all that it has and see lack in ourselves in some way. Mm. And I think that it's really important for us to continue to reconnect with ourselves and realize that everything we're experiencing around us is only giving us more to realize about ourselves and we're never in a space of lack we may feel it just because there's just so much to consume out there and the world i think wants us to buy things to believe that that will give us what we are seeking but it's really that connection and like you said travel great way to do it connecting to a form of art whether it's writing or any other creative outlet but yeah i think constantly Finding ways to reconnect is really important. Yeah, but I like stuff. Like, I like to buy stuff, you know? <laughs> I'll buy a shirt if it makes me feel good, yeah. you know? But, like, and also, like, to wear, um, I think to wear, um, and that's, like, it's funny because now I've started, what I've started to do is I wear things, like, at gigs, like, precisely as, like, if I'm going to try, like, I want, to, I want it to say something without it, like, causing too much of a stir. So like I have a shirt that's like I have a shirt that I think I have a shirt that just says like support live music. I wear that shirt all the time. Um I have a shirt I think I just got a shirt like I have a shirt called that just says the good witch on it to be like, yeah, I'm a little bit witchy and I'm a, you may think I'm a villain. Like there are certain things that I like I've been playing I've and it's funny because I've also gotten into custom ink, like that you just make making your own t shirts because I'll just take things that people say about me or like some things that like I find to be like wow this is, would be really funny or really ironic if I put it on a t-shirt and I just wore it around like so it's yeah. um so oh yeah I mean that's kind of um yeah that's kind of I, th I think that's yeah I think creativity is and be, be and a key uh be, whatever it is connecting to your expression um is what is going to make you look at yourself in certain ways. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I love that you went the t-shirt route because of course I, I am famous for having t-shirts. People <laughs> make fun of the fact that they don't think I wear the same t-shirt twice, but I, I, I have messages on shirts that I want people to see and I think that the beautiful thing about kind of what you said with the t-shirt is it's not just like a t-shirt that's giving you meaning. It's a meaning that you have that you want to express. And that t-shirt is helping you like express something even further than what you are doing while performing and 
putting a message out there. And I did see a comment where they asked, uh, do you find yourself more attracted to other artists or more of the opposite of you? Uh, I'll let you answer. <laughs> it. I, I think I'm the uh, opposite I've type dated, of person. I have dated artists. I have dated people in my industry. I have dated people not and completely separate from me. You know what it is? I used to always think that like I could never date another musician because I wanted to be like, I was like, I need to be the creative one. I need to be the emotional one, which I am. I need to be the like, I need to be this like weird, like eccentric and someone else needs to be like just normal. But now I've come to realize that like it doesn't really matter because I think person like a whatever job or or whatever occupation you have it it doesn't make a personality like it doesn't you're you get a personality from growing up and and um experiencing like schools and um art i guess it does relate to art but like <laughs> regardless of if you're a musician or, not, or an artist or not like it doesn't really matter so what i would say is that i'm not somebody who does it anymore more by like if they're uh, if, if they are a creative because I think then maybe there's something that could happen and I know a lot of very happily married musicians who married other musicians so I'm not like I'm I would <laughs> say I'm not like against that idea yeah I think for me um, he's very opposite of me in so many different ways but we understand and respect each other's journeys <laughs> because I think that there's definitely a need for respect of like what you're doing, because if you were in a relationship where someone couldn't respect you being a music, like magician, oh, musician, not I'm magician. A <laughs> but, but yeah, if you're in a relationship where there's no respect for your passion, that could be very hard. But I've found that I'm definitely the very emotional person. Like I'm very connected with how I feel. Whereas he is a person who does not outwardly express his emotions as well. It's like, I kind of have to pull them out of him when I need to know how he feels about something. Yeah. But in that sense as well, he's almost like the calm to my chaos because I kind of exist in a realm where I create. If I don't see what I want in the world, I create it. Um, which means I'm constantly in that mode of creating change and he's the person who really likes order and structure. So sometimes he, he creates order from my chaos that I create um, and can't explain and express to the world in the way I want to. So yeah. I've found that balance is important and just mutual respect. Mm. Um, and then learning to communicate with each other is a whole nother journey. That's, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting because like I, I've, you know, I've also recognized now, and I used to like be this person that's like, I don't care. I don't care if you think that like emotions suck. I will date you. We will be fine. But I was on a date with someone who I was like very into because like, a tr like physically, like I was a hundred percent my type and you know, there was something, but like we went to see all of us strangers, um, which is by far, like, I'm still not over that movie. Um, have you seen it? I have not. I now I feel like I need to go watch it. <laughs> you need to see it because it's just be it's it is a beautiful movie, but like I just wasn't expecting the ending that was. And if anyone also in that's watching this has seen it, they'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and I and like I'm a crier when it comes to movies. I cry, I cry when they're I cry, and we can talk about like specifically why. Um, but like I was very emotional and I was like looking I was like I had my hand on like the cup holder next to me next which was between us and like I was like I need you to hold my hand I want you to want to hold my hand yeah. and if that's not like that is bare minimum bare minimum <laughs> for me to like be like great this is a keeper like and if you don't want to do that then like okay this is and then the next day he was like yeah I don't see this being a match I was like yeah neither do I because like you weren't able to like I understand like you can not be in touch with your emotions, but like when you're in a relationship, I feel like, and I don't know why I'm talking as if I'm an expert. I'm <laughs> I the farthest thing from, 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 but like, I would expect that there has to be some, like a, some give, like some give, maybe 25%, if, if not 50, 25, 
at least like to know that there is an effort being made yeah. to at least meet you somewhere on an emotional intelli intellectual level. Yeah. And I, I think that that's something you have to learn about what's important to you. And when it comes to your journey of finding someone, it's like, okay, I'm not going to waste more of my time trying to project the ideal person onto this person when they can't even meet me here when it comes to something as simple as just allowing me to have emotions and connect with me in that moment. Yeah. So it's like, farewell, you weren't the one, let's keep going. Doesn't mean you're not for someone else, you're just not my cup of tea, and then just keep going, but yeah. And I used journey. to like, and I used to, and I used to like blaze through that and just be like, yeah, totally. Like, I'm not going to even like think about the fact that like I'm not I'm not being fulfilled by this. Like I feel like at the end of the day, we need to find person not just not just like personal fulfillment, saying like I have a partner and I have a life with this person, but like I need emotional fulfillment and I need, um, you know, I just I need to like I need to understand that like I'm not just going to be like I'm not going to like have, just have a title of partner slash husband slash boyfriend i'm going to have like something that's like just more like more fulfilling than that you know uh yeah so anyway um but yeah <laughs> and i mean i would say that yeah i so i think this yeah so and then i like started doing the positive the um self-confidence vlog which was yeah. i think probably what i think you enjoyed the most yeah um, tell, tell me more about that because I felt like it was a version of you that I wanted the world to see. Yeah. And when you started doing it, I was like, I'm loving it because it was like an authentic share. And I really liked how you were taking that journey with the people who follow you. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not like a huge influencer. Like I'm not somebody who I don't have your amount. I don't have, or neither do I have, um, like, I don't have a huge following and I don't usually like to be very personal online because obviously the internet is full of interesting things and I, you know, um, but as far as the self, the self confidence vlog went, I was, I think it came out, it was an idea that came out of the fact that like, while I was in therapy, like I was pra trying to practice these things of self confidence, like looking in the mirror every day and saying like, it's a privilege to know me um, and saying, that like I'm you know and writing like you know little notes on my um on my dry erase board on my fridge um and you know while I was like doing my little schedule that I do every week um and then, then uh I think it was at a call with my manager and I said to her I said to her, like we were coming up with ideas to like make content and songs I wish I wrote is like something I'll always keep doing um while I'm trying to like write and create an album but like I think with the self-confidence vlog it was like well why don't I just hold myself more accountable to it and I'm going to post about whatever I'm going to do to make myself confident in whichever kind of process and it's been mostly about like personal I mean some it's been like I guess half music half not like I you know and I was just like okay I'm going to do this I'm going to show people that I do this and I'm going to hold myself accountable and that I'm going to have to keep doing it. Um, and I, I will say like, I still have like my down moments. Like let, let's, I'm not going to like sit here and like lie to you saying like every day of my life has been happy since, but I think it's always a good thing to film and always a good thing to post about for sure. So I think that is a good idea. We've, we've taken a little break because I, we have a single coming up and we're, making a music video when we're writing another rec we're gonna finish writing a record but um it's there it'll be alive and well for sure yeah so i mean i i love it and i mean i've got a show called positive talk you do and i'm not always positive and there are, are days when life knocks me off my feet and i'm sitting there like thinking how rough and tough life can be sometimes yeah. and yeah positive talks definitely holds me accountable because I mean, the amount of times people have sent me episodes of me saying certain things when I'm experiencing a rough moment, and they're like, listen to the advice that you told your guest in this episode. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, great advice. I wasn't feeling that way at the moment. So, 
Yeah, I, I think anytime we can put that into the universe, it's important. Mm -hmm. um, and allow yourself to feel all the things. I don't personally post all the hard times that I'm feeling just because I utilize my space to kind of share light with people. And my darker moments are shared with people who are in my personal life, who are in my private messages, who have my phone number, who live with me or live in the same apartment complex. Like I don't like remove negativity from my life in a toxic positivity way. Uh, I allow myself to feel it. I just don't bring it online because I think for me, uh, I want to inspire. And I mean, in my positive talks, I'll tell you, like, life isn't perfect. Things get scary. I'm in the process right now of stepping into a lot of my own fears of being able to financially support myself full time with my coaching career. And I just the toxicity that I was feeling in the corporate world was not good for me. It was draining me in all the worst ways. So stepping into the scariness of entrepreneurship and relying on myself to provide what I need. Um, it's just like, okay, I've got to turn up the frequency and attract the life that I want and stop allowing fear to direct my choices. Mm -hmm. And truly believe that the universe will provide what I need. And yeah. I think you're also doing beautiful things with turning up your frequency. And I mean, your music is, of course, a frequency that will pull in exactly what you're wanting to put out into the world. Yeah, and I think there's, yeah, and I think it got, it also got to a point where it's like, I'm 30 and I'm turning, you know, and obviously like, you're a little older than me, but like, whatever. <laughs> We'll just, that'll just be between us. Um, and, uh, no, but like, I, no, I, like, I, I really didn't like my, I didn't really, like, I, I, I shouldn't say that. I, I think my 20s were okay. I think I went through, like, a rough patch. I think everyone in their 20s went through a rough patch. And I think coming out of it on the other side and, like, kind of, it was kind of like when you wake, when you're, like, in this dull thing and you just splash cold water on your face. That's, like, kind of what the what like the past couple months have been in like what the hell am I doing kind of a thing um <laughs> like I was yeah so I yeah I'm not, not yeah so, so yeah I don't know what else to say no but, uh I want to go back to something that you did say because you said that you're back in Miami where you're kind of connecting with some of your roots of you kind of mentioned like forgetting who you were. So like going back down there and connecting with people that were a part of that journey earlier on before life kind of showed you some of the ickier sides of the world and how it operates. Yeah. What, I mean, what has that journey been like for you? I mean, I've only been here for like a day. I mean, but like, I, so I went <laughs> how to- How much can you expect? <laughs> a lot i mean the university of miami campus has like completely changed i hadn't been, i hadn't visited since like 2018 so it's been it's it's definitely been like a journey for sure like i have not seen like these new buildings and everything is new but like and i thought it was going to be like a time capsule like go back and like kind of rejoin like the group that i was with when i was there but i realized is that like i was they're like my the fraternity I'm part I'm I was I'm an alumni for is uh, Fine Alpha and Symphonia, which is a music frat. And it's like these kids, this is their fraternity, this is their life. And I think I was just like, Oh shit, like this is not the this is not like yes, it'll always be my alma mater, but it won't it's not it's it time doesn't just stop stand still in places you don't visit, you know? Yeah. So and and that was what I realized yesterday. Um, and then I also realized, and you know, but I did see, I did surprise one of my old professors, uh, Dr. Kate Reed, and she is, there's so many things that, the, the, that this educator has done for me on a level that I don't even, even think she knows. And if she's watching, hi, I'm getting coffee with you. <laughs> um, she, I think was the reason why I, cause I thought like I was gonna be a music, I was a music business major and I thought like, I was going to, you know, I was going to sing a little. I, lo I loved singing jazz and I thought that was great. And then like, I think it was just working with her. I went, you know, we were, we went to like, and it, 
it, it may have not been significant to most people, for, but to me it was. And I was writing songs and I was, and I was just like, I think I could be an artist. Like I really thought in that moment, like in 2015, like this was something for me. Um, and I changed, it changed the course of my life. Like I did, I went to grad school immediately after and I got a jazz voice degree. Um, and do I sing jazz today? Probably, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but am I, am I performing, am I singing works that I created? Yeah. And am I working with a band that I enjoy working with and I'm so honored to be musically intertwined with them? Yes. Um, am I, you know, and I think, and for a while that like got me where I just going back to the positivity and creativity is that I, another thing that I, I was making a, a demo with a friend and I was really frustrated with myself because I wasn't like selling tickets the way I maybe could be. Um, I wasn't, you know, getting a lot of listens and everything. And then like at the end of the day, like music is fun. I'm doing something that is fun. Yeah. And I think people, I think a lot of artists a lot of indie artists specifically need to remind themselves that this is like a fun thing they get to do. Sure, like it may not like lead to any like commercial success, but you need to understand that like this is fun. So, uh, so usually whenever I'm like really upset with myself or if I'm practicing and I like hate something that I sing, I'm like, this is fun. This is supposed to be fun. Yeah. And I think that's been the other reason why I've had this like resurgent, this return back is that I'm reminding myself that music is fun. Yeah. Um, art is fun. Creativity is fun. Um, yeah. You know, so that's kind of been the, the gist. That's, I think that's, I think that's an overall shtick and I'm very happy to be back. I'm very happy to be in Florida. It's been so cold in New York. <laughs> it's been so cold. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I'm happy to have returned. I'm, you know, we're going to the campus again today. We're going to go to the rat and I'm going to enjoy myself. And I think that's also the thing people need to do more often is enjoy themselves. Yeah. Um, not try to like, and not let life like be super too, not be too heavy. Yeah. The, the life coach in me wants to say like, when it comes to when you said you may not be selling the amount of tickets that you would like, um, and then you jump straight into, but you're getting to do creativity and music and things that are fun. There are people in this world who marketing is fun. Those are things, social media is fun. There are things that exist in this world that others can, yeah. are There are many enjoying. platforms that are fun. Yeah. So I think it's important for like people who are not the marketing type of people to collaborate and connect with people who do that. And it's fun for them because a lot of times they will have fun helping you for free because it's their creative outlet is finding ways to market you and exist in your fun. Like there are times like even for me as a life coach, like I'm not a marketing specialist. Um, and as I've grown, I realized that there was a bit of luck in my journey of growing on social media. The algorithm just luckily picked me up at the right time and I grew quickly, but there have definitely been plateau moments where I'm just like, I have no idea how to unplateau um, my growth. And speaking to people in the marketing world who that's their fun, like, I tell them my journey and what I want to give to the world and their excitement just gets like, Oh my God, I want to get my hands into this. I want to help you. I want to do this. And that's like the journey that people have to realize is like, we're meant to connect mm -hmm. with others. Like mm -hmm. when we connect in a realm of people who are exactly like us, it's, we get stuck in places where it's like, well, how do I get people to know I exist? Yeah, because I'm doing what I love. I'm doing the energy feels right to me. And then when we try to jump into marketing, which is an ick for a lot of creative people, because we want to stay in the creative space. But for a marketing expert, that's their creative, that's their fun. And it's like connecting to people in that way. And knowing that everyone plays like specific roles. And you got to stay in your fun. Sometimes you have to step out and do it yourself. 
Um, but putting it out there saying like, I really just need help in this realm of things. This is the area where I'm not sure that I'm excelling in the way that is bringing attention to what I'm doing. Hmm. And there are creatives out there who are like, oh my God, I want to do this. This is so cool. I love what you're doing and I'm really good at marketing. Let yeah. me help you. And when you put passionate people existing in their realms of fun together, that's when like magic starts happening. And yeah. I would say that you've definitely got talent. You've definitely got your energy and vibe that you put out. Mm -hmm. So it's just now you have to find that person that's in another group of fun that connects with you that yeah. wants to excel and push you to the next level. For sure. And I think um, that's kind of people who I'm surrounding myself with. I think at the moment they may not necessarily be like the most like networkly enhanced people that I'm going to like get a record deal out of. But, you know, it's as long as they're pushing like me and they are in, you know, and I think that's just like what true friendship is, to be honest with you. I think that's just like people who know you, understand you, and just are either supportive or participatory in your efforts of trying to succeed and, you know, in like happiness. And yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it takes, yeah, I mean, it just, I, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember that last thing you said. Um, I'm on my ADD, ADHD meds too, and I'm like, I'm happy. <laughs> no, but I think that connecting with people who are good at marketing is great. And then thinking, because right, you what also I was, did, sorry, you did a music video. Now I remember. Go for it. Is that um, like Facebook, when it first started, it was supposed to be for people to connect like it before corporate, before it became corp, before it became a business. And then Instagram was also like when you posted a photo, like a photo, it was just a photo. It was just only meant to be a photo. It was meant to be nothing else. And now I feel as if, you know, and I think social media and I think marketing and I think all of these things that do connect people and like where their sole purpose is for connection and reaching and messaging and recent reaching is there is that there it can be that and I think a lot of people like take don't understand that sometimes um yeah. that like it's not meant for like to throw like insult turds like for no reason like you know it doesn't mean to be meant for like a spam bot to be like, do you want to, I get a spam bot, like, literally every day. That's just like, grow your following to 10,000, like, you know, get 5,000 likes, 500,000 likes on this post. I'm like, well, that, no, because I know it's fake. And I like, you know, and it's just like, and I wonder sometimes it's like, where do they, how, what are, what's the power, man, what's the brain power behind this? That's saying that this is a good idea. Yeah. You know? This is like, this is, this is what's, this is it. Someone looks at this and was like, yeah, that, that's the problem. Um, but not to shade, but I mean, I can be shady, but. <laughs> no, I think that that people don't realize how toxic that is to themselves because yes, others may look at your profile and see a big number or lots of likes under a picture, but you as the person who bought it, knowing that it's not real, it's not helping you as a person because you feel less like it's almost like fake assurance. Like when you don't show someone everything about you and they say, I love you in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, but you don't know me. You don't know this part of me. If you knew this, you wouldn't love me. Yeah. And you live inside your head and can't accept what people are giving to you. When people cheer you on for success and large numbers, and you know it's not real, you won't be able to truly celebrate that moment with these people because your brain is sitting there going, well, I bought them. <laughs> Those 10,000, I paid $150 for them. That's where- Yeah, that and I mean, me. I, and I, it's still like, I, it's still flack that I get from like venue, venue booker, bookers at venues is that like, they look at your following, they look at your interactions and they look at your Spotify and they, or Apple Music or whatever. And that's like wh what they judge upon to give you a gig. And that made me very self-conscious for a very long time. I was, I was like trying to like, I not like now I like, and I, I'm not going to lie. Like I did buy fake followers. Like, and I have, it's been like two years since I got rid of all of them. 
and like it's just so much it's just so much nicer like i don't care anymore like if a venue doesn't want to book me or not because i don't have a following that they approve of or if i'm not i don't care if another artist doesn't want to work with me on a billing or a, a a track or song because i don't i'm not like per personally like their type or I'm not big enough. I'm not going to, I'm not wor uh, worthy of their time. Cause I yeah. know I'm worthy of my time. I'm worthy. I'm worthy of, I'm worthy of saving my time and not wasting my time on people. And I used to do that for a long time. And now I'm realizing it is that like, I'm, you know, I'm worth giving my, myself time. So yeah. I'm I mean, if you look at tons of celebrity stories, there are tons of no's that people got. Like Meryl Streep got a lot of no's and was told she's not pretty enough. And I'm sure all of those spaces felt really stupid once she became a household name that people knew. They're like, wow, we passed on something that was actually phenomenal. And it's just because someone's not not ready to see your worth doesn't mean that the worth's not there. And I think that that's important for people to realize. It's just like, some people are just kind of stuck in a trend that you don't fit with, but that doesn't mean that one day you're not going to be the trend. And I think so many people just have to stay in long enough and keep doing it for the right reasons for it to catch on. And I think, sadly, the way the world is set up, like you were saying, like venues look at your follower count. So it sends you down a path of thinking, well, for me to be valuable, I need to go buy some numbers so that I can be not seen. That, like, and even it was like, I think at one point in 2020, like over the pandemic, I was like taking like thirst traps. I'm not like, okay, I'm not like, I don't have a six pack. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I go to the gym, but whatever. Um, like, you know, I try, I, I, I try, it's hard. <laughs> if I want ice cream, I'm going to have ice cream, Yeah. you know? I'm not like, and I'm, and I, and I now realize me having things that are good for me may not like necessarily be something that's going to get me towards like the specific fitness level that I'm trying to attain. Um, and that's the other thing also going back to fit and going to fitness is that I've another positive change I've made is that I'm not doing fitness for anyone else. I'm doing fitness for me. I'm doing fitness so I can be healthy. I'm doing fitness. So I don't like kill myself because I'm yeah. having, a, I have moments of, I have an hour to, to put physical energy into something, into um, my strength and in my balance and my um, my cardio, my you know, into my whatever, um, <laughs> whatever cardio does. But there's so yeah. I mean, that's yeah. Generally, it, it, I was I was doing thirst traps for a very not for a long time, but there was a period where I was like, I'm at the beach. I'll take my shirt off. I have a good chest. Like I'll just you know crop it to here. <laughs> And it's just yes. like, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that I went there. I'm sad. I'm not sad. Well, I shouldn't say that. But like, I'm, I think like, and we're using like the insta gay hashtag or something like that. Like, I think that's what really, those two things really like kind of brought it up a bit. And now it's just like, I think people, I just don't think it was right for me. And I don't think looking back at it, I would do it again. Um, I would probably only do it as if it would be like I'm like to be comfortable in your body kind of a specific kind of a way. I'm not going to just I'm not going to just like post. A, I'm not going to post a, th a thirst trap because I can. Yeah, I mean, I've I've gone on that journey as well, and the by attention the, that came from it. And also, by the way, there is a photo you made a poster of us, and like that the like the face that you gave me, I think you put a face like thing, like a filter on my face. That is not my face. This the, poster, the, the poster the, for this one is fine. Oh, but like, gonna, there was one, like, I say, I haven't added filters to the posters since you said that. But yeah, I, when it came to like the filters and stuff, I was trying to like match the colors of the pictures to, and then I was just like, you know what, forget it. I've gone through so many different phases of my, positive talk posters that I'm glad I finally landed on the ones that I've got now. I but like yeah, how I, like, I, I, th I've liked these ones. These ones are nice. Yeah. Like, and it's like, and I liked the pic, like you just took a, a pic. I think you just took a post of my, a selfie of mine. And I was like, that's great. Yeah. I, I, 
<laughs> yeah, I because <laughs> at one time I tried to like take out the backgrounds and add blue behind both pictures, and it was just like you know, like let's just keep it picture that someone's posted on their profile. That means that they are okay with the world seeing it. So use that picture, put it on there, and utilize it. And yeah, I think my journey through stuff is just like okay, I talk about like authenticity and all the things that I want to represent, but how is that represented through what I'm doing? Sure. But yeah, I went through the hashtag of Instagay just because- We've all done it. Trending. Like, we've all and done it. I'm not saying, you know- you, it's, it's just not like the only interesting one. to, when I go back and like ask myself why I did it, and I'm just like, well, well it was putting me in front of the audience that I wanted was it um probably not um but i think the journey is just like asking yourself like why because if you're on the beach and you're just having the most amazing moments that you want to remember and you snap a picture and post it it doesn't have people may define you as someone who posted the thirst trap but if in your moment of time when you took it it was just a moment you wanted to remember yeah. like even if the world labels it as a thirst trap, like if in your mind you knew that was just a moment I wanted to share and remember, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about what the reason behind why you did it. And I think that that's one of the things that people have to remember as and well. I think, we, yeah, and oh, this, this bring, I'm not, I'm not gonna specifically name the, name the person, but uh, there was a moment um, where I posted a video with my friend Kayla, we were doing a show together and we, you know, we were, both in, came from the jazz education world. And so they are, um, so we made the video and there was a part where it was like, oh, what is, we were like, what is swing? Like, ha ha ha, what is swing? And this person like had, like was just came out of nowhere. Like, and I, you know, I know them and they were just like, don't scoff. Like, this is the music that brought you to where you are. And I was just like, I know where I go. I, I know where I go. I know my musical journey. I appreciate that you're trying to teach me, but you don't need to tell me who I am yeah. and where I came from. You know, I don't need someone else to tell me that. I can tell that myself. So I that that's like the anecdote I would love to leave on is that like I don't need it's. Um, I think I posted uh, I posted a story on my story. It was like Wandavision. It was like when the bullies come, and it was like thanks for the lesson, but I don't need to, you to tell me who I am. Yeah. Um, and I think that's I think people. Need need to remember that is that you can tell who, yourself who you are you don't need anyone else to do that for you yeah. um yeah. especially if it's in a bad light maybe if you're getting honored for something then maybe it's like fine but like i i truly mean this where it's like you like only you you can tell a story about yourself in the best way no one else can and honestly like i just wrote and there's a song on the, this record this upcoming record called villain edit and it's literally like the fact that like i feel like um people it's i, I coined it from like drag race when you know a queen gets like a villain edit and it's like like the song is just kind of like this thing where it's like well yeah if i'm gonna stick to my life and if it's something that you don't like or something that you think is villainous like then give me the scepter and give me the crown like i'm not doing anything bad i wish you no ill will i wish you nothing bad but i don't need this energy in my life so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that hopefully that's... that song hopefully i can finish writing that song um and finish uh, arranging it so we can get it on the record but it's it was definitely like a fun a fun one that i i coined um so and i hope i hope i can get into the studio in may uh to finish it off so yeah yeah I, I think since we're getting close to the end and wrapping up, I think that that's an amazing area to put some focus on because I think a lot of people, I always, when people throw things to, it's like a spear at me instead of like handing it to me as a piece of advice or perspective, I just like to say thank you for sharing another reality with me. I appreciate the feedback. Um, it doesn't fit into my reality space but thank you for sharing another view of the world for me to see because in my mind i'm just like everyone's reality is valid like whatever world they live in it can be valid it doesn't have to be valid to me and but i'm also, not going to invalidate theirs. and also, 
So like, yeah, I don't, a real, like your fantasy doesn't need to be pushed on to me if I don't like it. I don't need, like, and I think that's, that's a whole other can of worms. But like, <laughs> there's a lot of organizations and a lot of people that do that saying like, this is the truth. This is the truth about yourself. And I'm like, no, like, yeah, send me to hell. I don't care. <laughs> Let's do it. If yeah. We'll have fun. And now it's just like. I think that's like what people sometimes don't get with when it's songs like um, Unholy by Sam Smith or um, Montero by Lil Nas X. There we're literally taking the fact that you're saying that we're going to hell and we're just, in, we're literally just creating art from this. And it's so funny because everyone's like, oh, they confirmed our beliefs. I was like, no, they're literally just making fun of you. <laughs> they're literally yeah. making fun of the fact and they're just, you know, he like he gave the devil a lap dance. Like, yeah. you think that this is a real thing that we're do that like we're planning for? <laughs> so it's just, I, I think that's kind of the point. And I, I, I feel like people need to like just back off. Like, let you know, just art is art, and I think it needs to be safeguarded in a way that people like can be creative and people can and can express themselves in a healthy and in a healthy and positive manner. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think the beautiful thing about being part of the LGBT community is we are already breaking the molds that we're told we have to be in. So like when it comes to artists that go out and take what is being shoved down our throats anyway um, and rubbed in our face, uh, we're just sharing. And that's an instant reality that the right people will connect to and understand. Like. When I heard those songs, I was just like, yeah, that's funny. Because I, it brought images of all the experiences I've had mm -hmm. of people saying exactly what those songs are portraying to people. Yeah. So it, it's a great way to take what we're being forced to experience and just make art out of it. So I think that's definitely a great perspective to look at it and continue to do stuff like that because I mean, if we're going to have to suffer through the experience, might as well use those experiences to tell a story and flip it back yeah. into a tool for us to use. Absolutely. So it's a great perspective. And I see that we're at the end of the hour. So I want to say thank you so much for coming on again. And Gee. I'm glad that you wanted to come on and share your music yeah. with us and I can't yeah. wait to listen to it after I get off and for the rest never, of the people to listen to it when it's out streaming. Yeah, Never Be Mine comes out on Valentine's Day um, and it'll be available everywhere at midnight. I will post about it. I will send y'all the links. There's a pre-save link in my bio um, for Spotify. If you use it, please follow me on Spotify because I need, I, it's the only way to increase my presence and for more people to see it. So. Awesome. I, yeah, but thank you. And I'll be back uh, at episode 600. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay. Awesome. Well, you have fun down in Miami and I will talk right. to you soon. Right. Bye. Bye.